Hey guys, welcome back to IT Garage. Stick around and see what it takes to get this car that's been sitting for over 20 years moving under its own power again. We'll relocate that to the passenger floorboard. Wait, there is none. We'll try to break the lug nuts off. And by hammer, I mean a four pound sledge. Let's just keep hitting it. Cause I'm pulling everything out with it. Uh, Do you understand? Uh, yeah. Rebuild it first. So we might have to grab some spray paint. If you're anything like me, then you absolutely hate drum brakes advice for this sort of stuff is be wealthy enough to pay somebody to do it brute force that brand new emergency brake cable will freshen up those shocks you can't use your pure strength i think we'll call that a perfectly prepped paint surface it says stops rust so we'll just paint over rust How that is bad news i was bleeding so we're just gonna roll with it pretend like that's how it's supposed to go all right, those still look terrible. Don't just tell me I'm an idiot. Tell me why I'm an idiot. We'll tuck that back on this side. Oh, okay. We'll just break it. And guess what? That costs nothing. I'll let the next guy swear me up and down. Also, continuity or whatever. Shocker that the brake line that runs under the rusted out floor is also rusted out. Yep, just what I wanted. Sometimes the glasses and safety squints just aren't enough, guys. It's a school night, so... Can't be too crazy. We're just gonna ignore this and uh, focus on that. After that attempted murder, put my shoes all the way first so I don't fall through the rust hole. Riveting content. This is a lesson. Just because they act like they know what they're doing doesn't mean they actually do. Hey guys, welcome back to IT Garage. And today, you know, it's the first video I'm filming after the new year. So, new year, new haircut. Uh, you can't see it. Um, and same bad decisions. Spent some money on this car, even though it's got floors that we cannot use right now. Uh, so even if we do get this thing stopping and running well, you know, I guess we'll throw a stop sign down. But anyways, we're gonna start on the Meteor today. We're gonna get some stuff done to it, hopefully. First thing, we're gonna get this thing running on a gas tank, because the one in here is bad. So we got some extra fuel hose in the basement. Hook this up here, see if we can get this thing actually running. Uh, the next thing, once we get it running, is can we get it stopping, right? That's a, that's another thing. So we've got about 25 pounds of brake parts here from the one and only Rock Auto. Spend 10% of what you bought in the car on brakes, you know, no big deal. But anyways, we're gonna get brakes done, uh, hopefully soon. We have two locked up wheels. This one back here with the hubcap on it and the opposite corner over there. So, the car is kind of stuck where it is right now. We cannot even push it or roll it or anything. So if we get these brakes done, then I think the plan is we're going to run it up and drive it around down back over here. And down there is where my welder is. So we'll park the car right there in the grass and hopefully we can try and get floors in this thing. I still need to talk to my buddy. Well, I have a couple buddies, a buddy who's done floors before and another buddy who's very into these meteors and fair lanes. And I believe the floor should be close enough from a fair lane to fit in this and we'll, you know, stab it together, throw carpet on it and call it a day. Let's just get it going back again. And first things first is let's see if we can get this thing running. We're gonna go ahead and pop this fuel line off down here. Run this just out the wheel well into our fuel tank. And then maybe we'll throw some coolant and water in here. We can get this thing up to temp a little bit, see does it blow oil everywhere does it, who knows all right got a few tools here Let's see if we can get this thing off now that i started this i think jeanette wants to go somewhere uh, after the baby wakes up from her nap so as i'm getting my hands dirty i'm gonna go get some gloves so i don't have to wash my hands so hard all right we're gonna save that hose clamp because who knows if we have another one over there yeah that you guys see how rotted that is? I mean, it's hard, <laughs> like really hard. A little bit of PB Blaster goes a long way when installing barbed fittings like that. Right. Like I said, we're gonna go down to the ground and I'll show you the setup on the other side. And I just realized that this will only work for a while because there's a, uh, I don't know, what do you call that? Filter, maybe, is that the right word? A plastic filter. So the hose actually can't go to the bottom it does go down into the fluid, the gas about that much. We should be all right. 
I guess we'll find out if our fuel pump works too. This ignition switch has got to go. It does not want to work sometimes. Although who knows, maybe I'm using the wrong key. Alrighty, we should be live now. Alright, here goes nothing. Is she thirstier? Is it a fuel problem or a power problem? Let's go get a proper exhaust clip of this. Well, we got a tiny bit of smoke coming out, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and kill this. We don't want this running too long. We, you know, we don't have uh, any cooling system in there right now. Yeah, I'm not sure what the problem was there. I'm not sure if it was the key. Uh, I, I don't like that ignition switch. I'm gonna have to get a new one. It feels gummy. The spring return for the starter isn't there. So we'll get a new one of that, but um, it idles. Um, so I guess it's now probably time to do a proper oil change. But first, let's see if we can get these wheels unstuck and some new brake components thrown on there. We're not gonna do the whole thing today. Um, I need to get my air compressor, blow out the hard lines to make sure there's no gunk in there. You don't wanna spend money on new stuff just to throw junk that's sitting in the lines back down inside. This is gonna be a little bit of a process here. It's not gonna happen in one day. Honestly, you'd be lucky if we get one wheel done a day, but that's just how it goes. I'm sure you guys know that. Uh, you know, we don't have all day to play on these things. It, it is what it is, but it runs, it idles, and it doesn't sound too bad a little makeshift fuel tank works we'll relocate that to the passenger floorboard wait there is none yeah let's go ahead and start turning these brakes i guess we'll start with the back wheel because it's closest to the tools we'll see i'm getting carried away over here what i need to do is start by soaking up the lug nuts because who knows the last time these were off the car and then we'll jack the car up uh, we'll not jack the car up. We'll try to break the lug nuts off. Uh, we'll go from there. There's one. Well, there you go. That was shockingly easy. Uh, I know I got a breaker bar on it, but still, usually that's a little bit more tough. So let's get the impact on here and break this thing loose. Well, I got a nice fresh battery, but I don't know where my impact is. So now we get to play that game. Well, I know you guys were super worried. Uh, it was the first place that I looked not in the carport, so I don't know why it was down there, but besides the point. Uh, let's get this car jacked up. We'll get these broken off. Throw a jack under here for safety, and we'll go from there. That's a dusty tire. It's a shame these tires are all dry rotted because they're actually not that bad looking. I guess what we'll do first is give it some love taps with the hammer. And by hammer, I mean, uh, what is this, a four pound sledge? Yeah, it's still totally stuck. Oh, well, there's some movement. Let's just keep hitting it. It feels like it's locked up right here. I can kind of feel the rest of it shifting a little bit, but right here seems rock solid. And before anyone says anything, remember, this is a stick car in neutral. Uh, E-brake is not on or not working because the other side spins freely. So make sure my pants are pulled all the way up. Nobody wants to see that. You coming to work? Yeah. What? Hey, what do you think? Do you like the car? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, what is all this? It's daddy's tools. What? Are y'all done? Uh, okay. Uh, it's windy out here. I'm sure. Yeah, you can see we're getting a lot of movement out of this bottom corner, but see how it's moving now? Because I'm pulling everything out with it. Uh, Do you understand? Uh, yeah. Yeah, what? So I, 
I'm pretty sure what that means is that the shoe is rusted to the drum. Uh, so I'm gonna look up and see the best ways to get a rusted shoe off a drum. Is it heat? Do I get some fluid back in there? Okay, bye bye. We'll see you later. I'll take some time, figure out what's the best way is to get this unlocked. Uh, we're probably gonna go to a children's museum while they're still open, uh, cause realistically I can work out here when it's dark outside and they have a closing time. So we're gonna go do some family time. We'll get back out to the sunk of junk later. All right, it's been more than a few hours back out here again trying to freeze to death we were able to get the little pry bar back in here and kind of pry and we got the big pry bar back in there too and pried and we beat on it with the with the pressure and that definitely helped uh, because as you can see we've pulled the drum off a little bit and it will actually rotate just the hair you know the axle isn't locked up or nothing like that we know that all right, I finally got it. It actually didn't take too much longer since the last update. Uh, you know, kind of even pressure it seemed to help quite a bit. So let me get you up in here. So I got it almost off now. I forgot to put my gloves back on. Well, no, we spin freely. That is not the problem. It was the, it was the drum, which is pretty rough. Okay. You can see where the shoes were setting and where they weren't setting. Well, that's a uh, PB Blast, I think. But look at the light and the dark and the light and the dark. So these actually don't look too bad. They don't look like they've been turned. Get all these dropped off at the local place that did the Etzel breaks. They are so kind to still turn drums. I guess O'Reilly's does it as well. We'll take it to the local guy, uh, give him some cash. I guess now we take a picture and look at our parts and maybe put a corner back together already all right if you're anything like me then you absolutely hate drum brakes but also if these old cars are your thing they're get used to them that's all i'm saying unless you are fortunate enough to have the budget to disc swap every time this is just part of the game so the advice for this sort of stuff is uh be wealthy enough to pay somebody to do it but if you're not that I like myself, watch the Chris Fix video. It really helped break this down for me. It helped a lot. So go watch that video if you want to know how to do these breaks. But we're going to go ahead, take them apart, uh, probably clean all this up. So I don't have any supplies to uh, rebuild all this. So we're going to have to run to the store and go grab that. And it might already be too late. Uh, I guess we'll find out. And we'll save all this stuff, kind of set it off to the side, just in case. But we did get a new brake hardware kit for this car. So hopefully it came with everything. But we're just going to break it down for now and get this thing cleaned up and, and halfway presentable and protected for the future. Uh, all right, looks like we're lacking the tools that we're going to need to get this wheel cylinder off. I believe it's a 3 8 and I'm also just about out of propane for my torch. So I'm going to get propane and a 3 8 line wrench. We'll bust these off, get everything good to go. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, scrape this down a little bit, uh, prep it, prep it for paint, as you could say, and we'll just kind of go from there. Uh, I might try to attack the other front corner. We'll see what time it is when I'm done with this and how cold it is. I'm sure you can already see my breath. It's working out in January, I guess. Maybe I'll get a couple more cans of brake clean while we're there, too. Well, that's at least got the loose debris off now. So I'm going to see what time it is and see if there's enough time to go to the store or not and get back or if we're just going to start tearing apart the other front brake. I guess you'll find out here in a few seconds. Same as the other side, not bad at all. Although I think we're gonna have a problem here. <laughs> I have no idea why these studs are so long. I'm guessing they've been replaced, but we're gonna need to find a 13 16 deep well. Well, it's not looking good for this crowbar. I think we're gonna have to resort to the same as the back, which is brute force. <laughs> um, obviously with the front, you gotta take the 
dust cap and spindle nut, whatever that garbage is, off. Uh, but we'll get that taken care of, start ripping this thing apart. But it is already like 10 o'clock and I gotta be up early tomorrow. We will come back to this then. And tomorrow I'll go out and I'll pick up all sorts of supplies and all that sort of stuff. We'll get brake cleaner and spray paint and is that all we need? I mean, that's all we need. Oh, the three eighths probably. Uh, line wrench to get the brake lines loose, the hard lines off the wheel cylinders. I'm gonna go through and hit each one of those with a little bit of PB Blast or whatever tonight. Start letting them soak, uh, just kind of go through. Then maybe tomorrow with a line wrench and some heat, that's right, propane, need propane too. Uh, with a little bit of heat in the line wrench and WD-40, we can get these off without breaking them too bad. And that'll save us a lot of time on the back end uh, here's to hoping. Hey guys, here we are today again, working on the Meteor. And I went on and picked up some, uh, actually some map gas. We got some spray paint, uh, some brake fluid, and if we get that far, which I doubt it, but good to have. It was on sale, really. It was like four bucks off, so picked it up. But anyways, we got a bunch of stuff going on today. Sunday, it's kind of nice outside, the baby's sleeping, so we're gonna go ahead and get as much done as we can. Uh, so I went and picked up a set of brake line wrenches from no other than the Harbor Freight. So now we have a wrench set that is complete and standard. I do have a set over here. Uh, they're not all nice and pretty, but that is mostly a set of metrics. Uh, you know, sometimes you work on metric stuff. Uh, it happens. Here, we got standard stuff. So, picked up a set of standard wrenches. And now you can really heat up that brake line fitting and get it off. Uh, you've seen me do it on a couple other videos. So, I probably won't video it. Uh, but just want to let you know that that's kind of the next step. So, let's go ahead and get this thing done. I have the wheel cylinder off now. Everything's looking good. Uh, got it wiped down one more time. And like scraped down and then I blew it off the leaf blower. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and put in, you know, all sorts of new parts here with one fell swoop. Right about now is when I wish I had one of those paint shaker uppers that Puddin's got. I don't think they're that expensive. I've been talking about buying one. Maybe I'll have to get myself a late Christmas present and pick one of those up. Beautiful. Brand new. All right, we're going to go ahead and do the whole wheel well. Uh, I've already sc scrubbed it down a little bit and... Yeah, we'll get taken care of. It should look better when we're done. And hopefully this car is low enough that you won't even see the wheel well. That brand new emergency brake cable. We'll freshen up those shocks. Get the frame done. There we go. Looking good. We'll let that freshly rebuilt passenger side sit for a second. And we're going to go unstick or attempt to unstick the front driver's side the other only other stuck wheel and once that's done we'll take apart the two that are unstuck and put the stuck wheels back together and we can use the unstuck wheels as a guide just in case we forget where a spring goes or something like that you know try to do one side at a time if you can that's my only advice but yeah just go ahead and do it uh these are brakes they are important, so make sure they get done right. But there's plenty of videos out there to teach you guys how to do this stuff. So go give those a watch before you attempt it yourself. And I just want to say that this matte gas right here is awesome. It broke that brake line free way faster and easier than the regular propane did. Or maybe it was just, I got lucky and it was easy. Uh, it could also be true, but I'm a fan of it. You can tell it burns hotter, that's for sure. Heating up bolts and stuff. I think this is going to be the way to go. Just uh, my two cents. Uh, I'm sure maybe a scientist in the comments will tell me I'm wrong. We got a plane flying over, a little crop duster. And we'll see if we can get this thing broken loose. Well, it did spin at one time. You can see all that grease in there. But she's been locked up for, I'm guessing, a minute now. Sorry about all the wind and the neighbor's dogs. You know, I can't control everything, unfortunately. So I guess at least it's not the constant cicadas that we had during the uh, other videos, but Maybe one day I'll have a shop with walls. But now is the time where that would usually just come off, but uh, I think we're not gonna have that kind of luck. So we'll grab our hammer and just gently persuade it off. 
All right, so that drum is on there incredibly solid. <laughs> so we're gonna go to Harbor Freight and buy one of their drum puller tools because the 58 also has locked up drums. So let's buy a tool that we'll use at least three times. Uh, you know, 30 bucks a time, I guess, isn't too terrible, but I'm sure we'll have more stuff in the future that we'll use it on. So go ahead and buy it now, uh, cause let's be real. It's not gonna get any cheaper if we wait long. All right, we're back from Harbor Freight. Olivia and Jeanette are out here. And I have assembled the five ton, three jaw hydraulic gear puller from Harbor Freight. It was like 80 bucks. Uh, so free batteries this weekend. All the wrenches were out, so. Some assembly required on this thing. It was not just pull out of the box and use. You had to assemble it. And uh, I had to use the outside bolts versus the inside bolts. I assembled it with the inside and realized that's not gonna work. So I had to kind of do it a second time. It's all right. Uh, but what's cool is it's got this uh, hydraulic uh, ram here. So let's see if this will pull this off. It did not come with the ratchet strap. I put that on there just so that the arms don't blow out at all on there nice and i mean it's guitar string tight so we should be good there all right well for whatever reason the phone did not record i have got to get myself a camera because this has happened too many times but the hydraulic ram worked it really did pull it off it did not pull it off all the way though uh so we are still still held up here by the uh shoes in the back you can see them rusted in there that was so much easier than prying and prying and prying and banging and prying to get those off. So I highly suggest that. Good little tool. You don't have to get that of a fancy one. I bet others would work, but it was 80 bucks. And if you're going to be doing stuff like this somewhat regularly, I'd say go ahead and do it. It, it was a, a nice change of pace there. Olivia's going to plug in the light to the Etzel here. Where's it plug in? Yeah. Play with PB Blast and we'll see if this thing comes off. I think I'm gonna need a pry bar just to pull this off. It's, she's stuck. Can you use your pure strength? My pure strength. <laughs> That's what the pry bar's for? Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, well we got it off. So there we go. We gotta uh, do all new wheel seals and everything. Not that that's a big surprise. I mean, come on, look at this thing. But just about good enough so we can take a picture on how the stuff should be routed. Alrighty, well we got that off. It wasn't too bad. So now we're gonna go ahead and again clean this up. We gotta take the wheel cylinder off still and pulling the drum like that, it did actually bend two of the little like push rods that go out from the wheel cylinder. I don't know what the correct term is. Uh, so I'll we'll have to pick up a couple of those. It looks pretty good, but nothing too terribly alarming. So we're gonna go ahead and Scrape this down, clean it up, and give it another rebuild just like we did the back. I think we'll call that a perfectly prepped paint surface. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with some paint. It says stops rust, so we'll just paint over rust. How's that sound? And all jokes aside, this thing really is super solid um, underneath here. There isn't much at all going on. Uh, it looks like how you would hope your car looks that you tear into. So we're pretty pumped about that. Uh, but let's give it a nice old dusting of paint here. Uh, get this front end rebuilt. Should look all right. Guys, it took me a little bit longer to get out here than I anticipated this morning. Uh, it's chilly, uh, but the sun is out. Uh, not that we see any of it here with the shade of the trees. That's all right. Uh, we got some extra coats and some warm socks on all that fun stuff. But today we are going to take the other drums off the car. And I'm sure last you saw, we got this all painted up and cleaned up. Looks all right. We're gonna go ahead and pop that wheel and drum off and same with the front over here. Uh, we're gonna take all the drums to a local tire shop where they will turn them for us. Uh, they all feel pretty good. No huge lips in them or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and get that done and then we'll start putting the stuff back together. And once we get everything put back together, we will then go and start clearing out the brake lines of any junk that we got. So we need to stop at Harbor Freight and get that adapter as well. Let's go ahead and get these other drums off 
and they should go pretty smooth because the wheels actually turn. Famous last words, you guys know that. This is definitely not ideal uh, right here, but I wanted all the space on that side because that drum was stuck. Uh, and I figured it'd take a little bit of beating. So the car's kind of in here like this. So the two drums that were stuck were this back corner and the front corner had the most space on each side. Maybe I should move it back, but let's see if we can just move it with its own power uh, out of here and sh shimmy it around. So another day, I guess. Put the lug nuts back on so we don't lose them. Well, I actually know. We have to keep lug nuts off because the lugs don't come off with the drum. They stay on the car. All right, so this one spins, but it's super reluctant to do so. Oh. Wow, okay. Um, I guess what we'll do is get back in there and try to adjust the brake shoes off and see if we can get this thing off the, the easy way. But first thing, we're gonna clean this mess up. All right, so we can get this thing off now. You know, I think we might be rusted on here. So let's hit this little bit of PB Blast. We'll let that sit. We'll also get the big hammer. Give it a smack. There it goes. There we go. Well, that wasn't so bad. But like I said, guys, we're actually going to leave this totally together until we get one side back together because it's nice to have four reference points. I am not a brake drum master in the slightest. So if we can have a picture to come back to and look at and go, okay, this does route there. This one's underneath the front spring, all that nonsense. If we have a good one or what we assume is a good one, then that'll lead us in a, a really good direction. We're gonna get that front one off and drop all the drums off at the shop where they'll get redone. We'll come back here and keep playing with all this stuff. Onto the front now. I almost took you guys out. Consider yourselves lucky, I guess. All right, same procedure as the back. We're gonna go ahead and, yeah, this is, again, it spins, but barely. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen the back up. This one's really tough compared to that back one. I think I'm going the right way though. I never know which way to go until, you know, you turn it too many times and it's hard to get off. Jeez, man. We might have to get the drum puller for this one again, because that sucks. All right. <laughs> Calling it quits. I'm gonna take the cap off, get the drum puller and pull this thing off. I've already taken too much time on it. We bought it. Might as well use it, right? The only thing I don't like about this tool is there's some assembly required, which isn't the worst thing. You know, it kind of takes some of the time savings out of using it if you have to put it together. Now, if you're in a controlled environment and you don't need to worry about taking it, you know, halfway apart or whatever to store it, good for you. Uh, you could probably save you some time. But for me, I want to store it just a little bit, so. Because this one's not locked on solid, I don't think I'm going to use the ratchet strap like I did on the other side. I don't think that's super necessary. I think I even said that. It was just an extra safety precaution. Let's see if we get this thing off. stuck on this yeah all the brake shoes came with it even though it wasn't stuck it wasn't good either oh. oh dang it that is bad news that's unfortunate can you guys see that those grooves that's bad bad news well it seems our luck has run out we're definitely gonna have to buy some new uh, new drums for the front because this thing is toasted. Let's see if we can get you in here and see what's going on. 
Can you see those rings, those ridges? I mean, that's like, that's like a quarter inch. I mean, and it's low here, it's high in the middle, and it's low here, which is why we couldn't just pull it off because there's a huge lip. And it doesn't feel like a lip that's been turned out. It feels like a bad brake shoe. And can you guys see all those ridges? That sucks. That sucks hard. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and take this, see if they'll see if they'll even touch it. They might not, uh, which I understand. I guess then after that, we'll stop at Napa, get the pieces that we need. We'll see if we need to order a new drum or not. Uh, might as well do both fronts, right? So let's just hope they're 20 bucks, right? <laughs> but that's all right. We can still get everything put back together today. We'll get these dropped off and we'll kind of go from there. All right, guys, we're back a couple hours later. Uh, you know, nothing is as simple as it seems. We got the drums dropped off. I haven't heard from them yet. I was hoping we would already, but that's okay. We might have to buy a new one, but you already know that. Uh, we'll probably buy it from Rock Auto if we do. What else do we do? We went to Harbor Freight. I uh, got a couple things from there to just help organize and the uh, actual fitting for the end of the air nozzle that we're going to use today, hopefully use today, and some brake shoe links is the term. Those because we bent up the other ones when we were pulling it off. So we at least have one good set. Uh, maybe we can heat them up in a vise and kind of bend them back if we need to for another one, but all the rest seem to be good so far. So let's go ahead and open this up and uh, see what we got. Make sure we have what we need. Uh, make sure we got the right size, you know, all that fun stuff. Then we'll start putting stuff back together. 26 pounds of brake parts here. We got our magnets. We got a Buick Retta and a GMC. We're gonna start in the back passenger corner over here uh, and get this brake squared up. And then we'll move to the front driver. Well, in classic IT garage slash Ben fashion, I seemingly ordered two left kits for the, what is it, brake adjusting, the self-adjuster kit. I did not order a right, so I'm going to order that right now and try to get one as soon as we can. All right, I found one here in town where I just was, where I just was. That makes sense. Anyways, yeah. I have H2514, I need H2515. It converted to a different part number. They have it, it's like 10 bucks. So I'm gonna go grab that right now. I just got off the phone with the guys from the tire center um, and they said that they have the drums and they are good to go. He said that they were warped bad. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go pay him 80 bucks and get our drums back. And that means that we have just about everything to put this back together actually, which is huge. Let's go get them. Uh, I got some more parts. Everything's good to go. I got the drums back. They look good. Here, I'll show you this one right here. It's a good looking drum. It smells like a metal shop. We got all four drums back and we got parts to do three of the four wheels. So I'm gonna try to get this back wheel done, back drive, back passenger, front driver and front passenger. And we'll leave that one over there. Uh, for tomorrow when I get the parts because we are supposed to get a ton of rain like two inches just tomorrow So everything needs to be cleaned up all this junk All this junk over here needs to be cleaned up the stuff on the back of the Edsel nothing can be on top of here So I am going to try to get this done as quick as I can Then when Jeanette gets home we'll have dinner and I'll have to come back out here later and finish up But I'm gonna see what I can get done we are not hooking up the brake lines just yet. Remember, we have to blow those out still. So that'll be a tomorrow thing in the rain probably. Today is just get everything kind of back together as much as we can. Everything's dried up obviously, it's been a while. And now we have our repair kit. Self-adjuster repair kit, it comes with, looks like everything. We have our wheel cylinder right here. They're very, very similar. Oh. <laughs> Hold the right side up, it looks exactly the same. There we go, okay, cool. Wheel cylinder looks good. We're going to assume that these parts down here are good. That one looks good too. So it looks like we have what we need. We're gonna go ahead and start throwing this together. Uh, theoretically, we shouldn't be getting too dirty from putting on new brakes, but we're gonna go ahead and throw some uh, gloves on anyways. 
Man, have I told you guys how much I hate drum brakes? All right, what are we that? Like a fifth of the way there now? Now I gotta figure what goes on next. Probably all this junk that I really don't wanna do. But this is a stick shift car, so I think we kinda got to, unfortunately. All right, I want you to watch the YouTube video. I'll be back. All right, so about three hours later, at least it feels that way, I was bleeding. I hit myself in the face with the tool, so that was awesome. We got everything hooked up back how it's supposed to. I watched a video on YouTube because I had no idea how all that stuff went and where it went. I initially said I was gonna do a front and a back or a back and a front or whatever. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the other back before I forget what I just did. And I'll do one of the fronts and I'll save the last one for tomorrow uh, afternoon, evening when we have brake parts uh, because we are still missing a adjuster for that side. Uh, I'm gonna go try to square up the driver's side, I guess. I'll film a little bit, but it's drum brakes. It sucks. Uh, I wish I kind of wish I got myself smacking myself in the face, but you know, it is what it is. Hopefully this goes well. Okay, not going well. There we go. All right, now I got that nice and hot. There we go, broke it loose. I cannot believe how easy these back brake lines have come off the car. It's quite shocking, actually. So we're just gonna roll with it, pretend like that's how it's supposed to go. Let's start disassembling the... Putting it back together is never as easy as taking it apart, ever. At least from my experience. The way that these look, I think that somebody's been in these brakes before, just based on what I'm seeing. That smells a little bit like axle grease. Uh, so we're just gonna pretend that it's not, and we're just gonna keep moving forward. I'm not gonna paint the whole thing like we did on the other side. I'm kinda in a rush to get as much done as I can before it's too late and too cold. So we're just gonna dust the inside of this, uh, and then maybe we'll move to the front and work on the front, so we'll come back to this. Wheel cylinder installed. Got the new uh, shoe on. You have to clean that off. Now we can go up in here, start throwing this thing together. We got all the hardware kit down here. Start assembly back here. Have I told you that I hate drum brakes? No, first time tonight? Okay, just, just checking. It's as easy as that. Super, super simple, no problems. It's actually a little bit of rust right here in the body. Other than that, it's super solid. It feels like it's midnight, but I know it's like nine o'clock. <laughs> Enough of a pity party. We're working on a meteor. How cool is that? Get back at it. We're gonna clean these up with the wire brush for a split second, jam those back in there, and then we'll put the, whatever this thing does back. I don't know what it does. Does it matter? Yeah, but does it matter that you know what it's called? No. I don't, I don't think so. All right, those still look terrible. Cool. Also, today the neighbor came over. We were talking a little bit. I'm actually gonna help him install the car play that I did in the Lincoln. If you haven't seen that video out, go check that out. He liked it in, uh, in my Lincoln so much, he asked me if I could help him in his Suburban. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm sure some of you are laughing. Well, I don't know how I do drum brakes or that I'm really bad at doing drum brakes. Let's be real guys, drum brakes are kind of a thing of the past. I'm not that old, so. Yeah, so I, I'm much more familiar with disc brakes. Now that there's a place for drum brakes and they're here, and so redoing them is way more cost effective than trying to do any sort of swap or anything like that. So they're gonna stay on, but just one of those things that I haven't mastered yet because I don't, have to slash haven't had enough practice that clip was supposed to go there that's that's what i forgot so uh we'll go ahead and take this off now then you get to do this fun game where you loop this in here while getting it to sit in there and attaching the spring all at the same time this should only take about a half hour also if you guys have a better way to do this help us out 
send a tip in the comments. Don't just tell me I'm an idiot. Tell me why I'm an idiot. 17th try is the charm. I didn't take too long, actually. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I really do not like that. That sucks. We got the back two done tonight. Obviously, there's still more work to be done. Let's not forget about that. But we have the wheel cylinders installed, all the hardware back in, self adjusters back on. So when we're ready after this rain, and when we have some more time and hopefully warmer weather, we will come out here and all we will have to do, famous last words, yeah, blow out the brake lines, put in a new soft line, and we need to bleed the master cylinder, uh, bleed the wheel cylinders, and adjust the shoes. Yeah, we're almost there. <laughs> After finishing that last drum in the back half, I decided to call it for the night. It took a little bit longer than I thought, and I'm excited about this thing, that's for sure. I hope you guys are too, uh, so stay tuned. Tell your friends if you haven't yet. Get, maybe give this video a share. Maybe subscribe. If you've watched this far and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. In my last like month of views, it's like something like 98% are not subscribed. So, guys, it's free. Hit the button. We're getting just a little bit of rain. What do you think, Olivia? Whoa. Yeah, look at all that rain. Yeah. It's right at the edge of the, the bank. Hey guys, we're back at it today on the Meteor again. Last day off from work for winter break. We're gonna try to get these breaks squared away. It's cold. It's not the temperature, it's the wind today that sucks. Uh, I got the carport dried out after the rain yesterday. It took a lot of squeegeeing and leaf blowing to dry it up. Got a couple extra parts we needed from the parts store, brake clean, all that sort of good stuff. Hopefully the wind is not ruining this too bad. I'm gonna try to get over here, maybe it's not as bad. We're just gonna work on it today. I don't know how much filming we'll be able to do with uh, these seemingly 15 mile an hour winds. Yeah, it, part of the deal, unfortunately, but Let's get at it. All right, so we still haven't got any of the car stuff done because we had to empty out the socket drawer. It was totally soaked with water. I dried it up now. You can still see it's a little bit wet in here, uh, but there's a hole somewhere right there. There's a hole in these boxes so you can like mount other boxes like this one. I'm gonna need to fill that in um, along with any other little spots because this one was totally wet. I mean, just sopping wet. Let's see. That one's got a little bit in it. See, look at that. There's still a bunch of water in here. Not as bad. Oh, apparently this one's got water in it. The rest of them seem to be okay. There's some water in this bottom one too. So, I don't know what the solution is. I don't even want to look in this box. I just don't want to. Because I know it's going to be bad news and I'm not going to get anything done. So I got to draw that line between taking care of your stuff and working. Uh, I just, I'd hate to see these tools get ruined. We spent some money on them over the last couple of years building this setup. And yeah, none of it's like that nice, but it's what we have and you want to take care of what you have. So I need to figure out something to keep this dry uh, because can't have that. It sucks and it wastes time. I've been out here messing around with it for at least 20 minutes and I still have a bunch of time left putting it all back together and reorganizing it. We're going to grab the sockets that we need and wrenches that we need to take apart the brake line off the front. That's what started this and then we're going to get after it and take that wheel cylinder off and rebuild the front brakes. All right, my little tip is if you know you're going to be replacing these lines anyways, just snip it off the back. No reason to try and loosen that up off the wheel cylinder. Just loosen that up, grab your hammer, knock that off and pull it out. It's that easy. Don't even worry about it. You're replacing all this junk anyways. So just set that off to the side, clean that up, put your new one in, and then you can get back to rebuilding this thing. I got to figure out how I'm going to get these springs out so I can lower this car. It's not like the Lincoln or the Courier. Uh, drop a hint in the comments, I guess. Also, have you guys ever seen this before? Goofy front suspension. I think it's called anti-harsh is what Mercury called it. 
It's supposed to help with the ride quality, uh, assuming that everything's fresh and good in there. We're just gonna pretend like that's not even there uh, unless it becomes a problem later. But yeah, I need to get this spring dropped out of here. And what I've read online, it's crazy long, a lot of tension in it. So it's not gonna be that easy, unfortunately. Front driver's side taken care of. I got my buddy over there uh, that I bought the Buick from. He's actually helping us today. He's working on the passenger side as we speak, but we are going to pack this with new grease and that's it. We're gonna reuse the bearings. I need a new cotter pin and I got a new seal, but we're just gonna kind of throw it back together and get it driving. And then if it sucks, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go back in and take care of it. But guys, we're budget here. We're not throwing parts at everything just to throw parts at things. Well, we're gonna fix what's broken. And we can uh, very much say that all the brakes were broken. We'll get this squared up and we'll uh, update you from there. But it's, it's kind of windy and cold, so. We're not filming a whole bunch today. And honestly, they're just brakes. This isn't a brakes channel. Go watch Chris Fix. He'll show you how to do it. All right, so good news. We got the front drums back installed. We got the old rubber hoses off. Uh, and we were heating up this uh, the brake line fitting. We threw a little bit of PB Blast at it and the rubber line actually exploded off the back like a gunshot. It was startling to say the least but now we are working on getting the brake lines off the master cylinder. And if we can't get this one off with that, we're letting it sit down there. It's uh, it's cooking. We're getting there. It's taking time as most things do, but we got our new master cylinder. Haven't bled it yet. We're just gonna bleed it in the car. It'll be fine. Probably. 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 <laughs> we are removing the master cylinder here. He's got his fancy little tool that I like and it's not loosening. <laughs> so, Thankfully, there's just a nut on the inside. Let's see if we can see it. Right about there. Yep, do it again. Yep, so you see how it's spinning? So we're gonna go ahead and hit that with PB Blast, throw a pair of locking pliers on there. Then maybe we'll get it off. We'll do it again for the other side, because the other side's toasted too. But look how bad these floors are. If I lean in those, we're going through, so we gotta be careful. The master cylinder is back in. Uh, we got brake fluid in it. Uh, we're just gonna let it sit for a while uh, But while the compressor airs up and that brake cylinder just kind of sits the master cylinder We're gonna go and work on his little Mazda Ranger B Thousand whatever it is uh, and replace some wing mirrors He's got so hopefully we'll get that done before it gets too dark and we can get back over here and, and keep working on this till uh, We gotta call it a night, but we'll see how far we get. We're coming back out today. It is cold um, but you got to come out here and work on these things if you want them to get finished. I saw a good post recently that said you don't finish cars by 12 hour work days. You finish them an hour a day at a time. That gives you time to then go and get parts that you need and just cross things off. Roadblocks aren't that big of roadblocks. You know what I mean? If you can go, okay, I'm done for today. Going to go inside, get that part ordered. And then the next day you can kind of keep at it again. Uh, let's get the brake hoses uh, all the way off the car. Um, and maybe we'll blow out the lines. Uh, maybe we'll check the master cylinder. Just a couple things here and there. Uh, nothing major, but just get some work done. Well, we got this line right here off the car. Uh, Mike and I got that off. So there is no rubber line on this side, but we're gonna go out and work on the other side. Cause I'm almost positive that rubber hose is still there. And then the one underneath the car as well. So if we can get those two off today um, and maybe get this bolted back in the car, uh, we'll be in good shape. All right, make sure you get your gloves on. Uh, not that they keep your hands warm, but they might uh, keep your hands clean, which will help when it comes about dinner time. Oh, <laughs> guys, look at that. It's already undone. Must hit this one with heat and got it taken care of. I don't remember. So I guess we'll just pull that hose out of here. That was stuck in there. Two down, one to go. So let's move underneath the car. Hopefully I can get you guys underneath there. Yeah, and this one we haven't touched yet. I know that for sure. So unless it just isn't there at all, uh, we're gonna need to actually take it off. You got our vent tube just hanging out. We'll tuck that back on this side. Oh, okay, we'll just break it. All right, add that to the list. Let's get this thing nice and toasty warm. All these brake lines look in decent condition. I mean, now that I say that, they're gonna blow out immediately. I don't know, hopefully we'll have good luck with them. 
I think we're good. And all these have just been stuck in there. There we go. I think we're just gonna cut it and just try to get a socket on there. I'm using my left hand here, so give me a break, guys. All right, we're gonna hit that with some heat after we make sure this fits. I think 9 sixteenths is too small, so let's try a 5 eighths. I can smell that gunk underneath it cooking. Remember guys, have your fire extinguisher handy. Just in case, you don't want to lose your rod because you're trying to get a nut off. So, just a little PB blast on there. Let's see what we got. Do we have enough leverage and space to work on this? Get up underneath here. There it goes. Not too bad. That's a win. And now that we got all that stuff off, let's get the air compressor hooked up and try to blow some of these lines out as best as we can, right? Don't think we're gonna get everything, uh, and that's okay. Give it a good college try here and see what we can get out of this. Uh, we put, you know, a couple hundred bucks and parts on this, and it's still on jack stands. Let's uh, try to not ruin those new parts with junk in the brake system. Little hot dog compressor. It's loud. <laughs> it takes a long time to build pressure, but it should do the job and it's probably the cheapest one you can get in the market i didn't have time or patience to deal with facebook marketplace finds so knew it was it's all right it's cool it works let's see if we can get some crap out of these brake lines shoot it see what happens we'll see if you can get my dumb face in here too ready well maybe i shouldn't put my face right by it i'll stand back how's that Woo! good thing i moved Why we let the compressor do its thing and try to build up pressure again. That worked pretty well. Uh, I don't know if any chunks came out. We blew out brake fluid. At least old brake fluid is out and we should have 100% new brake fluid. Or should I say 99.9% .9 new brake fluid. There's no inclination that I needed to do this. This is just kind of a, a good safety measure here uh, to, to make sure that we keep things nice and we, we try to do the right thing. So we're gonna move up to the front and do the same thing up there once that builds pressure again. All right, so you guys got to see the other side last time. So I'm gonna show you basically what we're doing is we're taking a little air hose here with a rubber tip on the back of it and, uh, and just basically jamming it into the brake T and letting her rip. I decided what we're gonna do initially is undo what we did today. So we're going to put all the brake hoses back on the car. I think that's gonna be the, the best thing to do uh, at the moment. We'll start in the back, uh, as that's where we ended. Uh, we gotta find the parts. I believe they're in the, cur the courier. Oh, geez, excuse me. Uh, go check out the courier videos if you haven't seen that yet. But we're talking about the Meteor today. But we have two brake hoses that are the same and one that is different. So this one should be the back brake hose. Now I need to go get a wrench, tighten that, because I only grabbed a socket because we cut it the first time. It's looking good. We are not going to connect the uh, wheel cylinders yet. I'd like to get fluid all the way out uh, before we do that. We'll grab our next brake hose right here. You know, fronts are fronts. And honestly, these look identical as the backs. They might be, I don't know. They made a bunch of Fords, right? And like this shares with the Fairlane, which probably shares, you know, enough of these, at least brake components of other various cars that getting parts isn't that bad. Even with the Edsel, we were able to get all these parts. Can you go into the store and ask them for a Edsel brake hose? No, they're not gonna be able to get you one. You have to do a little bit of work, but you can still get them and that's the key we got it done in the process i punched myself in the face hard um it hurts pretty good uh, we'll see if it turns purple or whatever so there she is looking good up there same thing back here looking pretty good you see it now there you go so i'm gonna go ahead and do the other side but the issue there is that the little holder for the brake line is off so we're gonna have to put it back on are we going to find a bigger bolt to make sure it holds? Are we going to self tap it? Uh, we'll see. Let's go ahead and try to do the right thing. And we're gonna run to the hardware store and see if we can just get a slightly bigger one of these. Too late. We will not make it to the hardware store in time. 
uh, before they close. It's just a couple minutes till six. So we're gonna go ahead and just try to reinstall this and hope for the best. And guess what, that costs nothing. Here's our contraption we got. I see nothing going wrong with this. It looks like it might work. <laughs> Can you guys see? No, you can't see nothing. I got it in there. Will it hold? I don't know. It's better than it was. Uh, so I'm gonna hate to uh, replace that in the future, but you know what? Will that be me? Will that be the next guy? I don't know. I'll let the next guy swear me up and down. That's fine. You know, hopefully it just works and we don't have to worry about it. That'd be cool. Well, there we go. It's in there. And that repair probably will not work because that screw didn't even go in the frame. Hey guys, welcome back tonight. We're working on the uh, Meteor again and we're finishing up the braking system. Uh, we're gonna bleed the master cylinder a little bit. We're gonna make a brake line and yeah, but uh, here you can see the little setup we got. All right, start pumping again. You can see there's a little bit of air coming out, but not a ton. So we're gonna keep doing this basically until we see there's no air left and then we'll uh, call it good enough. All right, here we are working back on the Meteor. Worked a little bit the other night. We did not make a brake line. We started bleeding the master cylinder and found that it was bad, which sucks uh, pretty hard. As we were bleeding it, you can see we're bleeding it here. It just kept getting air over and over and over again. We couldn't figure out why. As we were bleeding, we also realized there was brake fluid pouring down the back side of the master cylinder. Initially, I thought it was just PB Blast because I had sprayed everything with PB Blast to get it loosened up because everything under there is coated with surface rust. However, when it kept pouring out and coming out, I realized there was something going on. So I ordered a new one from Rock Auto. It's here. I got to send back the other one. Let's go try to bleed the other one. We'll bleed this one off the car this time uh, just so that we don't have to. In well, honestly, I can't install it. I need a second hand to install it and nobody's here right now. It's just me. So. All right, we got the brake fluid in. We got our blunt object. And here you can see, getting a little bit of air coming out. So we're just gonna do this until our uh, the bubble stop or our arms fall off or both, and we'll call it done. There are no bubbles coming out. It is strictly fluid. So we're gonna call that good enough. Master cylinder, done. Maybe I can get it installed in the next day or two and start bleeding the lines in the car. Maybe we can get it just moving to finish off this video. That'd be cool. It's been a while waiting on parts, waiting on getting stuff bled, that sort of thing, and just time. It's been really cold and really rainy. Uh, one of the wettest seasons on record, they say. I don't know. Um, but it's been crappy to be outside, is what I'm saying. We got the master cylinder bled. We saw that in the last little clip. That was probably just 10 seconds ago for you guys. So we'll set that there. Julian Gavin, nice looking Toyota. Anyways. Once you get that done and leave the doors open on everything, also get caught on the clip here. We have ripped more than enough, more than enough pairs of pants <laughs> and jackets around here. So that's why I keep wearing the same one uh, because I'm tearing up clothes and you know, who wants to keep buying clothes? So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna keep tearing up the same pair of clothes. Also continuity or whatever, trust the automatic wrench here. fluid is pouring out of there good news it's pouring out the front this time and not the back because it was pouring out the back that's a problem so let's see if i can get this in there just a little bit and if i can get that in there then maybe it'll i don't know let's see what we can do all right i got it hung on there let's see if i hit it with this if it will tighten or just fall off the back side what do you think i'm gonna guess it's gonna fall off the back side No way it grabbed. Nice. I'll take that. Uh, all right, so let's make the brake line now. We got the brake fittings and all that stuff already out here. And we just need to go just from right there to right there. Um, so it won't take too long. All right, we've got our horseshoe uh, brake line here. We're gonna go ahead and throw it in the car. Uh, nothing too crazy, but I started loosening up. I started loosening up this and it's, just finger tight, which would explain why it was leaking when I was installing it and putting pressure on the brake pedal. So not a huge shocker there, but how close were we? Yeah, pretty good. We'll make that work. 
All right, so we got a little bit of brake fluid coming out the one side in the back, the driver's side. However, we have a bigger problem, which is brake fluid is squirting out from right there. So that means either that fitting isn't right or more than likely the flare just isn't quite good enough. I thought it was good enough. Maybe it's not. Um, so let's go ahead, take that line off, redo the flare, try again. As you can see in this video clip, uh, bottoming out that new one is also not working, the long, the long nut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, after dinner, um, go up to AutoZone or Advanced or whoever and grab, they sell these lines in 12 inch sections. So I'm gonna grab a 12 inch section and maybe then it'll work. Uh -huh. but somebody's been leaf blowing. Uh, at a business behind me for, I don't know, 30 minutes. I don't know how many leaves they have uh, in February, but it's obviously a lot. Filming is gonna be short today, I guess. But I think I figured out the problem with the master cylinder. It might be like the Edsel where I just had it hooked up backwards. Uh, I ordered a new master cylinder. Let's take a look at that real quick. All right, so in there, can you see that? The bottom? and how it's right there. But in this one, it is way, way back in there. I think the brake pressure switch needs to go on the one facing forward and the brake line needs to go on the one facing up. And because this guy's been weed whacking for 45 minutes now, I did that not on camera. And here it is. Uh, so basically all I did was moved it from there to there and there to there, and now, that is fit in there nice and tight. It doesn't move anymore like it did before. Same with that one, nice and solid, nice and solid. And that is on there. Um, if it leaks a little bit, I can probably tighten it down a little bit more. We'll see, but let's go ahead and put a little bit of pressure on this brake system and see what we get. But let's go see if I can get uh, some pressure on these brakes. All right, well, I think I already know the answer. We blew out a brake line up under the floor of the car. Now we get to replace the longest and most frustrating brake line on the whole car. I guess we'll start doing that now. I'll show you the mess here. It got about two, three good pumps. And then all of a sudden I was like, I hear something. All right, so here's some light. You can see what we got going on. It is a little wet in here. All that soaking wet. It's just dripped from somewhere. Um, but yeah, shocker that the brake line that runs under the rusted out floor is also rusted out. Come in a little bit here, put some light on that. Yep, yep, right there. We got a leak, so. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, well, it's building up pressure. I'll go ahead and get that taken care of. It's still got pressure in the line. There we go. We will now lay down and brake fluid and get that taken care of. And we're just gonna replace the whole line. You know, we're not fans of unions around here uh, when it comes to brake lines anyways. We're gonna get that swapped out. But again, it looks like the master cylinder problem is just me not knowing, um, which is gonna be a common theme around here if you haven't figured that out yet. Stay along, watch us struggle, and see how uh, someone who doesn't know how to work on cars works on cars. As you saw, we have a bad leaky brake line. So we're gonna go ahead and snip it on out. I have some brake line here from other projects, uh, and by that I mean the, the 59. So much for this uh, cheapo stuff, uh, Nikop. It's got some uh, corrosion on it to say the least. Just like everything around here, it's got a little bit of corrosion on it. We're gonna straighten this out, see if we have enough to do this section. And if we do, we'll throw a fitting on the one end, try to route it as nice as we can, and yeah, kind of go from there. We've got this tool here. I probably paid way too much for it when I bought it. I think it was like something crazy, like 40 bucks. But every time I use it, it makes the cost a little bit easier to handle. It's pretty cool. You get a line of brake line like this and you just kind of feed it through. And as you feed it through, it straightens it out. So nice and straight. So just keep doing that until you get what you need. And I think that this is gonna be plenty of brake line. Look how far that is. I'm hitting the in the pole from here so that's i mean shoot we're definitely gonna be making a brake line tonight i was afraid we weren't gonna have enough so we'll go ahead and snip the old line off the car i will just we'll just snip it off a little bit of heat on there socket break it off uh, we'll do that on both ends 
Uh, we'll pull the old line out, obviously, and then we'll uh, go ahead and, and stab this new line in. That's the one we gotta take off. Yep, just what I wanted. There it goes. All right, I had to go inside. I got some dirt, rust, junk in my eye. Uh, you know, sometimes the glasses and safety squints just aren't enough, guys. Um, be careful. But we got the brake line up to the front and hooked up. Right there, you can see that we got it hooked up. Run down just about where it was from the factory. So underneath the car, you can see we've already got one right in the factory holder. So we're going to go ahead and, you know, just bend this line. Kind of follow it back as far as we can until we can't anymore. We'll see how this goes. Hopefully less uh, junk in our eyes. We got the brake line run, looking pretty good. We got some zip ties, pulling it together. It is what I'll call close enough to the factory. It's in all the clips, except the ones that I broke. And look how close we were on the total length too. I mean, we were off by not very far. I mean, it's, we're going right there. But once we get that flare nut on there, line connected, we will uh, bleed it again. I will open up the rear bleeder, get all the air out of the lines, see if another line pops. I mean, that's really it. The rest of the line looks good. There really isn't any more rust at all. I mean, this is a Southern car, guys. Um, it's been here at least a while. So only the spots that are bad are bad. Everywhere else is pretty good. Though, so because it was underneath where the floor rusted out, the brake line also rusted because there's moisture there from the carpet and the windows being down. I'm sure the windshield leaks, whatever it is. That's kind of the uh, update for the night. Got the brake lines squared up. We will see you when we're bleeding the brakes. Guys, tonight's the night. I really think that tonight is gonna be the night that this car moves under its own power. I've rigged up a little tiny fuel system. And by tiny, I mean a pint or quart of Marvel Mystery uh, right there. And that is gasoline in there. Uh, so I'm gonna refill it because I actually just ran the car to make sure that it starts off its own key. So it is doing that now. I don't know when the last time it did that either. You know, 20, 30, 50, 100 years, whatever. Um, but it runs off its own key again, like it's supposed to. The only thing keeping us from moving this thing right now are wheels and the fact that the seats are just kind of thrown in the car. So we'll get these seats taken care of. Uh, we're not going to worry about the holes in the floor just yet. Nothing like that. Not even going to clean it. Uh, maybe we'll do a tiny little patch on the windshield just to be a little bit safe. But just clean up all the junk that's on top of it because it's collected things. Well, as things do when they sit. And let's see if we can get this thing moving. Just a little bit, right? Can we go up to the top of the driveway and back? You know, it's a school night, so can't be too crazy. So uh, let's go ahead and get the car cleaned off and then and out and then we will go ahead and put the seats in put the wheels on Jeanette should be home we'll have dinner then we'll come out here we'll bleed the brakes one more time just to be safe because there is still quite a soft pedal the impact is in the house uh, for a project in the basement we're working on so we'll get the uh, inside sorted out first before we put the wheels on yep box of parts more parts, we got a new belt for the car. Some little odds and ends in here. Honestly, most of that's garbage. We'll save the box, those make good creepers. That back seat is wedged in there. <laughs> of course, of course. Well, as we get this back seat out, I can show you what I just discovered. All we could see in the car was the front, well, the back seat. And from what we could tell, it looked pretty dang good. And what we could see of the front seat was also pretty dang good. For example, I'll show you. That is a good looking front seat. What we didn't see hidden underneath the back seat was that. So, you know, there's, it's always something. Uh, but what does work is the dome light. How cool is that? You know, silver lining, the seats tore up, dome light works. 
Uh, let's go ahead and get this front seat just slid kind of forward. Try to get it in the seat holes. They still are here. Here's the front one. So it's not yet been taken uh, taken up by the rust yet. So we're just going to ignore this and uh, focus on that. Let's see if we can get the seat set in there. All right, we're back out here tonight. We ate dinner. I got some stuff on my face. Anyways, uh, Jeanette is not pleased <laughs> with the current state of the inside of the car. Oh, less about the current state, more about what am I out here to do, Ben? Bleed the brakes. How long do you think my legs are that I can sit in the back of the car <laughs> and pump the brakes? We gotta, we gotta put the seat in. Oh. <laughs> I didn't think you're Wilt right, Chamberlain. <laughs> Taco Fall over here. There's the hole in the seat that I was telling you about. It is disgusting less than ideal um that's a nice way to put it yeah so we got the dogs barking outside they can't be trusted inside with the baby asleep at all um, so they're outside with us so excuse the dogs barking um but we're gonna go ahead and get the seat moved up and then we will start bleeding the brakes which you guys it's bleeding brakes we've done on the courier we've done on the edsel do we film on the courier I don't know. What do you want to see? My foot? <laughs> One, two, three. Hold it! <laughs> Maybe. You never know. <laughs> All right. Anyways, we're going to get working on this. Oh, see. I can't show my feet. You're not supposed to post pictures of your feet on the internet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> you get to watch us uh, struggle and uh, yell at each other about getting the seat bolted in. Here we go. Bolting? No, we're not bolting it in. We're just setting just it. I just want to go inside in my bed. We're set <laughs> it's like 8 o'clock. It's not even. It's like 7.30. Yeah. Not really. It's there we go. That's at least enough that hopefully oh. we can just grab it from the front. Wow. All right. It's a nice thud. It is a nice thud. Here. Uh, oh, you just threw a pick at me. It's not sharpened. It's sharp enough. Yeah, it's not sharpened. Anyways. After that attempted murder. All right, so here's our uh, bolts. <laughs> we got the name brand vice got grips it. on this side. And we got the Harbor Freight Special on that side. Jenna, you got a wave? Come on. Oh. Where are you at? Hi. There you are. <laughs> so we got our vice grips in. You want to push back on the seat? Is it moving at all? Or are we good? We're good. It's wiggling a little bit, but we should be all right. Interior installed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Down and around, baby. All right. We're gonna do that, you know, two per wheel, all the way around the whole car. We'll catch back up with you in a minute. Holding. <laughs> I can see your phone. That is. <laughs> <laughs> Your phone peeking out from the floorboard is hilarious. I hope it can see you. <laughs> this tire's a little flat. We'll pretend it's not. We're about to find out if I can A, drive three on the tree, and B, this is brakes. I didn't think about that. I'll put my shoes on the way first so I don't fall through the rust hole. You should maybe also wipe the windshield a little bit. Are we going to be that picky? You can't see and it's dark. Riveting content. Also, first clean. Wow. Oh, same. sorry. Let me zoom in. All at the same time. But let it set for a second. It's baked on there pretty good. Um, it does come off your finger, so there's yeah. So there's hope that this will come off. Oh yeah. There we go. I don't know if that's any better. <laughs> well, once I get a second <laughs> rack, it will be. Come on. Really shaky. Sound. There you go. Check that out. Better than it was, I guess. Yeah, All right. like a thousand percent. Mm, I don't know if I'd say a thousand. Oh, come on. Nine nine. Before and after. Also, look at this great setup. We're real professional here. We know what we're doing. Well, we act like it. Oh. Set the baby down. Look at that sweet baby. All right, no headlights, no brake lights, nothing. I can't see nothing. If you didn't hear that, he said, I can't see nothing. 
Oh. Weak. Can't drive through a tree. <laughs> I guess that's all that matters. And he's stuck. Oh, he wants to turn it around. If I had a good carburetor, it would be easier. Because you don't know how to drive it. Oh, come on. <laughs> wow. I thought that was going to take all night. And there he goes. Lesson. Just because they act like they know what they're doing doesn't mean they actually do. You're just a silhouette. It's Keep up. This is terrible quality. Get moving. stops mostly i still think there's some iron lines but it's facing a different direction it made it up the hill down the hill we didn't drive over the edge we didn't hit a neighbor's car a neighbor's mailbox um, <laughs> but you know it did it so we're good to go uh i just i love this car look at the fence get out of my way look at they look so good look at that so well, I think that's probably where we'll end it off tonight. What do you think? This 100 gig video, this will probably be the last bit of it. So I just want to say thanks for watching, guys. Uh, let me know what you want to see with the rest of this car. Obviously, next video, I think we're going to give this thing a little bit of a wash. You think? It could use it. So uh, just remember, <laughs> tell your friends, subscribe. And guys, we don't know what we're doing. So just go out and wrench on your own stuff. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.